The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patria. Joined by none other than my good buddy Santino Cocone for this wonderful Thursday, January 28th slate. We got four games to talk about. It's a light one coming off that massive 12 game heater that we had to deal with. Uh, but Santino, man, it's a whole week. Glad to be here with you. I don't know if you heard mine and Will's show, uh, but man, uh, I hope you did. Nah, I, I, didn't, I didn't tune in for that one. It's a three gamer, <laughs> two people I'm not so fond of. Didn't feel like listening. I already, knew, I already knew what to expect, so <laughs> kind of just just let that one sit on yeah. the back burner. Yeah, I imagine. I, 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 you know, I was hoping you would, but uh, I'm, I'm not surprised you didn't. Uh, nonetheless, man, I'm, I'm glad that you're here with me tonight. We're going to have some fun on this little four-game card. Shouldn't take too long, guys. Only four games. A lot of, uh, not a lot, a couple of these teams are on back-to-backs as well, so we're not even going to have a lot of the injury report news or the game line, so... Uh, you know, as always, it's a first look podcast. You know, this is uh, this is what's to get you prepped and ready. You got to continue to follow that news, hang around in the Discord, get all the information, absorb it, and adjust. But before we hop into anything, quick shout out to my bookie. And if you guys haven't checked out my bookie, head over to mybookie.ag. Uh, ever since I started the podcast, people ask me who am I betting on. We have the Super Bowl right around the corner. Uh, am I taking Father Time with Tom Brady? And yeah, I think I might. Uh, you know, I, it's hard to bet against Tom Brady. You got Patrick Mahomes on the other side. Whatever way you want to go, you're going to be good. Just head over to mybookie.ag for that bet. Use that promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L. You'll get a 20% match on, or I'm sorry, a 50% match on your deposit up to $1,000. So you put in 1000 bucks, they'll give you $500 for free to play with. It is the only site I will use to put any bets in for this Super Bowl coming up, guys. So Head over there, use that promo code HOOPBALL. And while you got uh, your websites open, while you got your internet browser open, open up another tab. Go check out Manscaped, guys. Uh, Their product's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to highlight the Weed Whacker on today's show just because it is impossible to say ear and nose hair trimmer. I just did it. That was probably the best time I've ever got it out of my mouth. But, guys, seriously, check it out. Uh, This is a fantastic product they just came out with not too long ago. I got mine sent to me maybe about a month, month and a half ago. And it uses a 9,000 RPM motor that goes in a 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. It's intelligently contoured design, enhances the trimming experience, and like I always talk about, the best part about it, just like all the products, it's waterproof. Uh, Makes for easy operation, easy cleaning as well when you want to take that thing apart. And it's the only nose and hair trimmer that's powerful with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery that lasts for up to 90 minutes of use. So quick charging, long using waterproof fantastic products guys use that promo code hoopball20 h-o-o-p-b-a-l-l-2-0 and you get 20 percent off plus free shipping on your entire purchase over at manscape so check them out santino first game 7 30 eastern standard time we have the portland trailblazers traveling to houston to take on the rockets in this one it's, uh, it's gonna be a fun one but we do have an injury report for this one. Dante Exum ruled out. Christian Wood is considered questionable. He did say that he's expecting himself to play. Uh, he said he feels like he is a 100%. And then on the Trailblazers, Zach Collins, Robert Covington, CJ McCollum, Yusuf Nurkic all ruled out, while Derek Jones Jr. and Rodney Hood are probable. I'll pass it over to you. We'll start off with this Portland team. It's only a four-game slate. Damian Lillard, we know the top dog that he's going to be with all, all these other bodies and the usage he's going to have, but... Is he the guy that we could spend up on on the slate? I mean, knowing that there's not going to be Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, that takes a few of the options that we're going to spend up on. Uh, there's not going to be C.J. McCollum. There's not going to be Devin Booker. We'll get to three of those four later. Uh, there's not too many guys to choose from over AK that you're going to feel super comfortable with. Uh, LeBron James, is. we'll get to him in the next game. They're going against Detroit, so I don't know how much he's going to even – play in that one Uh, same with ad so really realistically there's not many people that we can pencil in for 35 minutes in a up tempo matchup in the top end of the slate knowing that they're going to get a ton of usage and 
Damian Lillard checks all three of those boxes. Yes, he's 10-6. Yes, he's the highest guy on the slate. Uh, but his last five, uh, four games without McCollum and, and his last four games in general, he has a 50-point floor. So uh, he is going to be super safe. It's against the Rockets. That, it, Like I said, it's going to just be a fast-paced matchup. Uh, John Wall looks really good. Oladipo looks good. But they both have injury c- concerns of themselves. Uh, yes, I'm I'm comfortable going with Damian Lillard. In, on this four game slate, knowing that most of the other options either aren't healthy or can't expect them to play too much in a blowout scenario. Uh, and then Curry has a hard matchup as well. So, yes, Damian Lillard definitely for me is in play. Uh, so is, I mean, um, I wanted to say Cantor, but that's that price tag is, is getting to be too much for me, 7 1. Uh, but Melo, without Robert Covington going against his the team that kind of shipped him out of the league pretty much, not just the team, just shipped him off the team. They took the Rockets, released him, and nobody else picked him up. So Mellow Revenge Tour with Robert Covington out at 5,600. Uh, you can sign me up for that one as well. Awesome matchup. We'll just probably just played match- against the Thunder in the last one too. So it's like I feel like at, at this <laughs> point, the journeyman, he's just going <laughs> to – every other team, it's going to be somebody he played against. Uh, now played we just need the, the Knicks and Nuggets, and then we got the whole the whole crew going on there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, out of, out of him, uh, Gary Trent Jr., Rodney Hood, Derek Jones Jr., Mel, if we're going by just pure points, uh, Melo's the only one you can consistently count on at least double-digit points, um, or I should say team points in the teens with potential for more. So I'd rather spend up and get my me some Melo exposure in this type of matchup. Uh, outside of him, them two, I won't mind looking at Derek Jones Jr. if I spent down just because he does a lot of different things and he's going to get the playing time. Um, and that's those are the three guys I like the most on, on this squad. How about yourself, buddy? Yeah, no, you you hit that perfect. There's not much more I can say. Lillard's definitely in play, even at that 10-6 price tag, given uh, the usage he's going to have. And like you said, the limited options we have to spend up on. Uh, Mello, very solid play at 5,600. You know, once we start hitting that 6K, we got to think about it a little bit more. And then all these other ancillary pieces, you know, I've been saying it since we saw McCollum go down. They're all in play every single night. You know, they're all fair. There's plenty of usage to go around. They're all going to play at least 20. Some will play close to 30 minutes between Derek Jones Jr., Gary Trent Jr., Rodney Hood, uh, even Anthony Simons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all four of these guys should continue to get solid run along the wings, and it's just going to be the hot hand approach when it comes to you know guys like Gary Trent Jr. and Rodney Hood, uh, and, and even in Simons in some cases where you know whoever's playing is playing well is going to stay in. Uh, we've seen them do that. It was it was uh, Trent in the last one. It was Rodney Hood in the first game where we saw McCollum hurt. Uh, and it's probably going to keep bouncing back and forth. So are these guys great cash game plays? No, you probably want to reserve, you know, Mello, Derek Jones Jr., and uh, maybe Lillard for the cash. But, uh, you know, Trent, um, Derek Jones Jr., and Rodney Hood and Simons are all, you know, GPP plays as well. Uh, so that's kind of the way I'm looking at it in my builds. I'll probably end up with mostly a lot of Mello, a lot of Lillard. And I could see myself getting some uh, Derek Jones Jr. just because of that defensive versatility and things you could do in transition. Moving over to the Houston side of things, though, uh, expecting to have Christian Wood back. He's 8,700. We've kind of already seen some rumblings of what they're going to do with DeMarcus Cousins now uh, after he really just kind of blew up and showed what he could still do when, when Wood was out. Uh, they're saying they're going to try to get him 25 minutes. Now, does that actually come to fruition? Is that going to actually be you know feasible before they end up getting rid of uh, the eventual you know shopping of P.J. Tucker? But nonetheless, we have some decisions to be made. You know, I don't think I could play Cousins now with Wood back. He's priced out. But could we play Wood at 87 in his first game back going against his Portland team? And that's all going to come down to pregame reports on how healthy he actually is. Does he have a minutes restriction? Uh, is he going to be limited? Uh, and all stuff like that. If it's a blowout, are they going to leave him out? I don't think it'll be a blowout. But if I get the sense that Christian Wood is back, he's ready to go. Uh, there's no restrictions on him. I don't mind paying 8700 for him in this matchup. He's going if he can get 35 minutes against Enos Cantor, uh <laughs> he's going to eat that guy alive. Enos Cantor moves very slowly. He can he grabs offensive rebounds, he grabs defensive rebounds, but he doesn't really play defense. He doesn't protect the rim. Uh, Christian Wood can go coast to coast as few centers can and even though at an 8700 price tag, again, there's not that many big guys to spend up on that are healthy and uh, you can fully count on them. So I, he would definitely be in my player pool if I can see 30 plus minutes from him. If not, then both him and cousins are off the list for me. 
And if Christian Wood doesn't play, Cousins steps into that similar role that I was just mentioning for Christian Wood, maybe not as athletic coming off those major injuries, but definitely in a great spot. So I just want to see the pregame report on how much Wood I have (laughs) and how much Cousins I have. Um, but I won't have Cousins if Christian Wood is playing anywhere close to his normal allotment of minutes. Outside of them, uh, John Wall's in another another good matchup at 73. I don't think he's priced up to where he can be. I think he can get into the 8K range, and then that's when I'll think about it. But right now, I think he's he has the better pricing of him and Oladipo. Uh, but we have yet to see all of these guys play on the same on the same team in the same court in the same game. So that's something to keep an eye on. I won't have too many shares of John Wall, but at that price tag, I still like him. Uh, and outside of the, them, this is kind of a wait-and-see approach for me with this team. I like this team. I like all the pieces that they have. I like how they play fast and loose. Uh, but there's we've I've, again, we, we haven't seen all of these pieces together, and it's getting very close to where we might see them. And then you add in Kevin Porter Jr., and that's just another guy taking a chunk of minutes there. Uh, so I don't want to overexpose myself to them but this is a fantastic matchup so i'm gonna be playing me uh, more wall than i want Uh, maybe i'll get some jay sean tate in there um i'll have some exposure but more gpp and light exposure than i will cash yeah well said man you're taking my job uh and just running with it today so i don't i don't think i really need to (laughs) need to add to that too much christian wood i i he's saying he's 100 percent. i think he said it on a houston radio show everyone says that though yeah (laughs) so i'm especially when the guy that's your backup just (laughs) went on an absolute tear and you're like all right maybe i should get back out there uh i don't want to lose my job at this point took him this you know this of anybody in the nba that had to work hard to get a starting job and earn a contract christian wood is one of those guys so I wouldn't blame him. Uh, he's very much in play, though, at, at 87. You know, Oladipo, I love the matchup. I'm a little worried about just how this usage is going to shake out now. Um, we were we were talking off air, and I don't mean me and you, actually, one of our close friends, uh, about Victor Oladipo. And the one thing I'm worried about, and the difference between him playing with John Wall as opposed to Brogdon, is that Brogdon is a very similar guard to Oladipo, where they're kind of those tweeners. You know, Brogdon's not a traditional point guard necessarily himself. Uh, where he could play off ball very easily. He can also Wall, shoot. Yeah, Wall exactly. It's not known for shooting uh, anything other than mid-range jumpers and closer. Exactly. So, you know, more of the defenses are going to be keen in on Oladipo now on, this, on the wing. It's going to be him playing off ball probably about 85, 80% of the time. It's going to be a completely different scenario than when he was in Indiana. Yes, I get it. You know, he's, he's Sabonis and Wood. They're both two bigs in usage. Wall and, and Brogdon, they're both two point guards. But it's still a different situation, so I kind of want to monitor that. Now, I do like him as a contrarian play. Uh, if you're talking to GPPs, you know, to pivot off of a guy like Chris Paul, who we'll get to later on uh, at a very similar price tag, who I expect to have much, much higher ownership. So for that case, you know, I could see him in that in that circumstance. Uh, but for cash, I'll probably just avoid it and end up going with Chris Paul uh, at that same price tag later on. And that's it. I don't, I don't think I'll end up on Wall at 7,300. I don't hate it. It's just... Uh, you know, how many minutes can we expect from him? And, you know, 24 against his former team in that last one, you know, might be seeing 28 to 30. And then, like you said, all these other guys, your Nawabas, your Porter Juniors, your Tates, uh, it's it's a wait and see. Daniel House is back as well, and he's got, mm-hmm. I believe, played 13 minutes in that last one. So uh, he might be starting to get his minutes creeping back. Uh, it's it's such a weird situation for this Rockets team where I'll take my chances, let other people play him. Moving on to the next game, though, L.A. Lakers traveling to Detroit, take on the Pistons. <clears throat> we were talking about it before. Uh, LeBron James, is this the game that we finally see him rest, Santino? I mean, it's kind of, you know, it looks like it's there. Uh, it's just up to, you know, father time if he's going to catch up to him on this one. Uh, we do not have a game total. We do not have a spread. No surprise here. The Lakers are uh, playing right now as we speak. But we'll start over here on this Lakers team. It's a back-to-back for him, second half. LeBron James, I think he had like 23 points in the first half uh, of this game, or 21 points, whatever it may be. You know, it doesn't look like there's any sort of real ankle injury, but this seems like the reason why he's been listed with a questionable tag every single night for these kinds of moments. Do we see both LeBron and Davis play? Uh, That's a big question. You can't answer that now. Uh, And every team... After that first Take game, out your crystal ball. What do you mean you can't answer? <laughs> Every team outside the Clippers is on a back-to-back, so it's something to think about. I don't necessarily think LeBron's going to sit. If someone's going to sit, it's going to be more so Anthony Davis. Uh, this is just LeBron's FU season, and I'm keeping that PG-13. FU season to everybody out there that 
was saying, oh, the, they, they're going to get him as much rest as possible. He's barely going to play in January. It's a shortest turnaround. They just won the title. All he cares about is uh, winning. Yes, that's true. He wants to win. But he also wants to show that he's different than everybody else that's ever played this game. Uh, so I don't expect him to sit, to be to be quite frank with you. I think he's going to play. If he plays 30 minutes, that'll shock me because this is the worst team in basketball that they're going against. Yes, they're on the road. Yes, they're losing to the Sixers right now. But the Pistons are terrible. They're flat out a bad team. They don't even need him to take 15 shots to blow them out. I, I don't think this game stays fairly close. And I think maybe he gets 27 minutes. So he plays, but he doesn't have to exert himself, really. Uh, he doesn't have to be LeBron James. He can let everybody else, he can give more shots to Schroeder and Hero and, let, and, and Kuzma and let everybody else do their thing. Uh, same with Davis. So honestly, at 10-4, knowing that he's the second highest priced guy on the on the slate, and he's back-to-back games of, uh, well, he had 46 last game, and he's, He's over 30 tonight. Uh, I know there's, what, three, two minutes left. He's at 34. I don't think, I, I just, I can't play him at 10, 10, 4. Just, just knowing all this stuff that could go wrong for him. It's not safe. Uh, same with Anthony Davis, 8, 9. That's a price that he continues to creep down and scream, play me, play me, play me, play me. And this is a smash bot for him, but I just, it's hard to trust um, both of them knowing that this game could get out of hand as early as the first quarter. To, to be honest. So I will have more shares of Davis of the two. And at 89, uh, we were just talking about Christian Wood. If Christian was not 100%, I'll definitely pivot to Davis if he's playing. Because even in 30 minutes, he could put up 50 points against this bad, just bad team, bad all around team. Bad. Uh, that's the be- <laughs> best way I could say it. The Pistons are bad. So bad, yes, I will, bad I will have <laughs> the bad boys uh, in a different, <laughs> exactly, in a different way. <laughs> But outside of them, um, it's hard. It's going to be hard. I might, I might have some GPP flyers at Taylor Horton Tucker, thirty one hundred. This is a game environment to where he should be playing extra minutes because I expect them to just blow this game wide open, uh, and maybe he'll he'll see twenty minutes. And at bottom barrel, thirty one hundred, he's a guy who shoots and shoots and shoots. And when he's hot, he's hot, and he can bring back, um, bring you back five, six to eight, eight times value on this slate if he gets enough run. So I'll look at him. I would I'll give more interest in Kyle Kuzma just because again this this matchup uh, everybody else not too too keen on um, if I had to look out of Harrell and Schroeder I would give Schroeder more of the look um, but it's hard to trust anybody outside those two guys in a dart throw but I will do more of those pieces than normal because it's the Pistons yeah again well said. Uh, I, I think that Davis price is just a little too cheap. Where I think no matter what, I wouldn't mind taking the share out of him. Because even if he plays 28 minutes, 30 minutes, Davis could easily pay that off. LeBron's probably out of play for me. Uh, and then, obviously, if one of those two guys sits, the combination of Harold Schroeder, Kuzma, all get bumps. Caldwell Pope against the team that drafted him. I think this is a rock-solid spot for him at 4K. I don't mind taking some shots at him. And that's probably it. I do like your Taylor Horton, Tucker Qual. You're right. If there's a game where he's going to play 20 or 18 minutes, it's probably a game like this one at 3,100. That's a good GPP call. I expect little to no ownership. Definitely a good way to differentiate yourself. And if you can hit on that one, you're looking good. On the Detroit side of the things, uh, you know, Blake Griffin sat out the front half of the back-to-back. Um, Derek Rose played. So we could <laughs> probably, probably be flopped. <laughs> it's probably going yeah, to be a flop. That's probably what we can expect. Derek Rose... Uh, we'll sit out the second half. Blake Griffin will probably play in the second half. So that's something that we're going to have to monitor. If Blake, if Blake Griffin uh, does play, you know, expect Sadiq Bay to get shifted back to the bench. You know, he didn't do anything. It, it, you know, with all these guys back in, like, the starting lineup, it, the the usage isn't there for Sadiq Bay like it was early on in the season when we were kind of seeing him explode and hit those threes at a high clip. So for me, I don't mind looking at some Josh Jackson at 4,800, just a guy that I think he'll get some solid run regardless of game script, regardless of what's going on. Uh, this dude's just been a blocks machine lately for, uh, from a wing guy. And, uh, you know, those defensive stats, they help give you that solid base floor. Obviously, we're never going to get a ton in the rebounds and the assists, but a guy that can easily get you 12 to 15 points, chip in a couple blocks and steals, and all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, 25 to 30 DK points. Um, I don't mind taking a shot on him. And then Wade Ellington's just been absolutely on fire. 5,100. I don't love it. I don't want to do it. But this dude is just not slowing down. It doesn't seem like he's going to stop shooting anytime soon. 
pretty much got a firm grip on that starting shooting guard job. And, uh, yeah, I guess there's worse options you can go with right there. But that's it for me, man. I don't see myself playing Blake. I don't see myself uh, chasing DeLon Wright. He's been playing great, but I just don't want to go near it at 6700 And then Grant is starting to get up at 8400 It's a great price tag. It's a tough matchup, but you know what? If the Pistons are actually able to keep this one intact, it's going to be a monster game from Grant. One of those 34 actual point, 9, 10 rebounds, several defensive stat types of games if the Pistons hang out in this one. So if you're game scripting it, and you, maybe you're playing a uh, LeBron or an AD and you want to run it back with Grant, I see that. I get that. Yeah, and as we speak, the Lakers are on an 11-0 run, and now it's a one-point game with under 20 seconds left. Uh, if they can pull out the Sixer game, they're, <laughs> they're probably not going to try as hard against uh, the Pistons and still win. But uh, I'll touch on Grant first because you mentioned him a little late or at, at the end of your your um, your guys. He's at 8,400, and we just talked about Davis and uh, Wood. Those guys are both safer to me, and and uh, assuming Wood has a full complement of minutes, of course. But if Grant is only $500 difference between him and AD, I know the matchup is crazy, but I just can't gravitate towards Grant. Uh, I'm going to go with the, the higher – while he's playing not as – not his normal self. I'm just going to gravitate towards AD. I don't think uh, it, that's it's, it's just a crazy price difference to me when it's that close. Uh, but yeah, I think Derrick Rose is also going to sit in this one. Uh, Blake Griffin don't like the matchup. Jalone Wright not really. I don't mind just uh, Josh Jackson. You mentioned 4800. That's a pretty good price tag for me. Uh, everybody else, it, it's probably going to be a bench type of game, but the minutes are going to be chopped up to where no one you I can't expect anyone to play. Uh, off the bench 30 minutes like Isaiah Stewart, uh, uh, Sequoy, all, all these guys, I can't expect them to play in the 30 minutes. And while they're basement bottom, uh, like basement level pricing, you could take a flyer on one or two of these guys in a GPP. But if you're playing cash, none of them are safe to me. So this is just not a game environment game script that I really like for this team against the one of the best defenses in the league. Not one that we need to pick on. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, next game, we're at the halfway point right now, so that means if you have a quick second pause and stop what you're doing, go give us a thumbs up, rate, review, subscribe, click the notifications, uh, whatever it may be, wherever you're listening. Uh, it really means a lot to us, guys. We adjust, we adapt, we try to give you guys the best content that we possibly could. Uh, we're working overtime, we're burning the midnight oil with our team over here, we got some new bodies in, and we're adding some stuff, so... Every single thing that we do is catered to you guys. We want to give you guys the most fine product. So, uh, you know, drop a drop a five star. Leave a nice comment for us. We'll read it. It cheers us up. It makes us feel like all this hard work that we're putting in is getting somewhere. And it also allows you to have a voice so that we can cater to your product. And then while you're at it, head over to hoop-ball.com. Check out the Fancy Pass or maybe just the DFS Pass, whatever it may be. We have both. DFS Pass 199 gets you access to all of our behind-the-scenes articles, access to the Discord before lock, so that way you can hop in there. You can ask our pros some questions. You can just chat it up with some of the other listeners, some of the other members, uh, and just to have a good hoops community. Uh, and it's a great part and a great thing to be a part of just because you get to just you know kind of crowdsource and, and spin ideas off each other, get an idea of how maybe the, uh, some of these fields are playing. And Bottom line, just get a little sense of security. Maybe you know, maybe you, you know the right play in your head. You just want to be, you know, a little affirmation helps. Uh, it goes a long way. And that's, you know, we're here to help. We're here to kind of uh, dissect some of these issues and adjust on the fly with you. So, guys, head over there. Uh, get that DFS pass for $1.99. And if you're a season-long listener, too, as well, uh, you can get this, the Fantasy Pass for only $3 more at four ninety nine, And that gets you access to all of the Discords, not just the DFS. So, L.A. Clippers. Traveling to South Beach. Take on the Heat. No lines, no totals. For the Clippers, injury report. Patrick Beverly, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard all already ruled out. The Heat have yet to submit theirs. They are on the second half of a back-to-back. So, we'll start off with this Clippers team. No no Leonard, no George. Uh, We saw what to expect in this one. It was just a lot of run for these guys. And I mean, I, I can't see that changing really necessarily. I don't think this is going to be just a, a blowout matchup. I'm not expecting a massive spread or anything. So for me, Santino, it's pretty easy. Uh, you know, I'm going to go back to the well on a lot of these same guys. Terrence Mann, 5,400. I don't mind playing him. I'll probably have some fair shares in him. He looked great. He should continue to play the, between the one and the two significant minutes. Uh, Marcus Morris, 
you know, a little price bump of only 300. He struggled in that last one. I don't mind going back to the well in this one. Looking for a nice little bounce back game at 5K. One of the few guys that kind of still offers us a little bit of value on this Clipper team. Uh, and then outside of those two guys, it's a few dart throws. Now, you know, Lou Williams has been absolutely awful um, all season long. And listen, if you play Lou Williams going against Atlanta, that's shame on you. Uh, you should know right now, you never play James Harden and Lou Williams in Atlanta. It is the number one DFS rule. The strip clubs are too great down there. These guys cannot contain themselves. They are always out the night before. I don't I don't know. Maybe, maybe COVID stopped Lou Williams in this one, but it would shock me. He's also the guy that left the bubble to go to a strip club. So, you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just to get these on some wings, man. Uh, I get it. You know, you just got to get you, you just got to get your wigs. Uh, so I don't mind going back to him at, at this one. 5,800. He's he's not someone that we can really, de- you know, rely on. He's probably a better tournament play than he is cash. You know, the cash game, maybe you, you look at Patoom or uh, even, even Reggie Jackson. But uh, Morris, man, those are my two top options. And then, you know, maybe taking a stab at one of those. Th- I'm not playing Kennard. I won't do that. Uh, I'm not. We we talked about him off air, Santino. I've been burned by Kennard too many times to to keep chasing him. But who are you looking at over here on this Clippers team? Yeah, I'm looking at the three same three that guys that you mentioned and some Reggie Jackson as well. Uh, I know it's 7K. That's a very big price tag. But the guy played 39 minutes, took 16 shots, and it see and he had eight assists and seven rebounds to boot. It seems like without Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, it's not Lou Williams' team now uh, where they're running everything through. Reggie Jackson kind of took that mantle, and he kind of supplanted when when those two big guys were playing. He took the backup uh, job from Lou Williams lately, so it's looking like things are shifting there. I know 7K is a high price tag, but he's going to get a ton of run. And if if there's uh, again, if if they're missing a lot of people on the other side of the ball, he might be having Kendrick Nunn guarding him for the majority of those minutes. Not a great defender. Neither is Tyler Hero. Gordon Drogic's pretty solid at defense, but we'll see if he even plays. Uh, so I don't mind looking there. And the three guys you mentioned, man, uh, Marcus Morris, Lou Williams, they should all get good run. One thing I do want to keep an eye on, they haven't played, even in the last game, with without George and Leonard, they don't play, they're not playing Batum and Morris together at small four, at both forward positions. And uh, that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I don't know why Ty Lue's not trying that. It's not like Batum was an exclusive power forward at all before the season. So I'm kind of curious as to why that's the case, but I think that changes in this matchup. Uh, but that's just speculation on my part. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I was, I was looking at that in the last one too. And you, you think that maybe they do that because uh, they go against the Hawks uh, play a little bit bigger uh, with that being said. Um, yeah. It's worth monitoring. It's definitely something that we have to keep an eye on just because we want these guys to be able to play the most about them. It's possible. And you would imagine that they, they both should be locked into at least 25 with George and Leonard out. Uh, but uh, I think they're both still in play. It's just the risk. Maybe don't play them together, I think, is the way that we look at it. Maybe they're, uh, you know, nice little uh, hedge plays against each other. We are ready to move on to the – oh, no, sorry, uh, Miami. Jeez. Trying to move on to the last game just yet. We'll slide over to the other side of the ball. Uh, so in this game today, uh, Tyler Hero and Gordon Jogic both sat out. Uh, Tyler Hero's questionable coming into this one. So maybe they, maybe they sat these two guys on the front half of the back-to-back. To get them in there on the second one. Now, if both these guys are back in, could we play Kendrick Nunn? That's what a lot of people are going to be wondering. The answer for me is probably no. If yeah, we I'm see not, Dragic, I won't play him either. Yeah, no. Once Hero's back in that lineup, there goes ball handling. There goes usage. It's going to get funneled to this kid. Same thing with Dragic. You know, if both these guys are in. They're both fantastic plays. I'm not worried about the, the next spasms with Hero. If he's ready to go and he's playing... You know, it's not something that I expect him to necessarily aggravate in the middle of the game and, and, and rest. If he's playing, I expect him to play 30 to 32 minutes. Uh, 7,400, it's a steep price tag, but we also know that this kid's a walking bucket and is probably looking at about 35 to 40 points minimum uh, if he's the primary facilitator on this team. So I think he's very much in play. Same thing, Dragic. I, I've been playing just loads of Dragic every single night that he's available. And then outside of that, I don't think I'm going to you know, necessarily go towards anybody like um, an Olenek at 54. He's kind of priced out of my liking at the moment. Bam at 92. We've already talked about so many centers and so many bigs in that 8, 7, 8, 9 range. So I don't think I'm going to end up falling on too many Bam. But there's one guy worth mentioning, and it's Avery Bradley. He's 3,100. So you talked about Taylor Horton Tucker. 
Uh, if you know, if, <clears throat> if you don't want to take the chance on that game necessarily being a blowout, Avery Bradley returned to the lineup in that last one. He's only 3,100. He's probably going to play somewhere between, you know, 17 to 22 minutes. Nothing crazy, but at 3,100 in a matchup like this, he could hit value and return us something at a GPP. Well, the the big news that we didn't touch on it, it Jimmy Butler might play. He already cleared protocol. He didn't play uh, tonight on Wednesday. Probably not going to play this game, but it's quite possible. And if he also plays with Hero and Drogic, I don't want any part of anybody, to be honest with you. A very good matchup against a starless Clippers team, but I just don't know where the minutes are going to go and, and who's going to be doing what because so many people have missed time. Uh, it's it's going to be chalked up to a committee type of approach. Uh, but if Butler doesn't play and Hero or Drogic play, I'm, I'll probably I'll have more Drogic than I would a hero because you get the twelve hundred dollar discount, and I, again, I won't have none if these guys play. I, I want none of him uh, <laughs> if, he, if he's not the main guy in this backcourt rotation type of thing. Um, We've been pretty yeah. funny tonight. <laughs> um, I don't mind Bradley at thirty one. Again, that's something to monitor. He hasn't played in a while. He played tonight, uh, but he this will be the second game of a, the back end of a back to back. So how many minutes he plays is something to keep an eye on. But at thirty one hundred. Not a bad guy to throw your your hat in the ring there. Uh, and Gabe Vincent, if everybody's out, he should get a, an okay amount of minutes for a bottom barrel type of guy. Not someone I want to trust out necessarily as well. Uh, this is another team kind of like the Pistons, but in a completely different way of why I don't really trust too many of them. It's hard to pinpoint who I want to play and, and we're knowing that there's three guys that demand a lot of usage questionable and may or may not play in this game uh, once we get a firm answer on if they're in or out then i can pinpoint on hey okay this is where the usage is going to funnel and that's where i want to go to but you mentioned bam at 92 i think we mentioned we already mentioned three other people or a couple other people around that price tag that are slightly cheaper that i like a little bit better and in, in a better matchup yep the same here all right final game of the night golden state warriors traveling to phoenix to take on the suns well, this is probably going to be the game where, outside of that first game, where a lot of the ownership is going to be as well. Uh, no injury report, no spread, no yep. surprise. Both are there playing. There it is. Yep, both are playing right now. So we'll start with this Golden State team, Santino. Curry's the other guy I'm spending up on. If it's not, if I'm not paying up for Lillard, I'm paying up for Curry. It's just that simple. I think those are the two best high price guys on the slate. Breast. Uh, <laughs> We just, <laughs> yeah. and uh it, it's uh it's that simple um i don't mind looking at a guy like draymond but i don't think i'm gonna end up going there wiggins has been balling out uh we could take a look at Ubre. what do you think about Ubre against his former team i don't love that price tag i don't love the the matchup i actually probably prefer bridges on the other side of the ball for a little bit cheaper but there's the narrative there so that's the thing. I, I just I think it's just Steph for me on the Warriors side of the ball. But there's a few guys that if you want to take shots on, I don't hate it. Uh, just probably not guys I'll end up falling on too much myself. Yeah, I think it's just Steph also. Uh, Going to have more shares of Lillard. I love the matchup a lot more for Lillard. But again, that's nearly a thousand dollar difference. And if it if you like the second player or, or the three three options or so, uh, if, if you have a better lineup. Spending down with that nine extra extra nine hundred dollars, yeah, I think Curry's the second best option on the slate as well. Um, I think Wiggins is a. I just don't like the matchup for a lot of this team, so I'm not going to be spending upper for Wiggins, who, as you mentioned, is playing a lot better. I don't. Draymond Green is he, the defensive stats aren't there. He's more being a secondary coach on the floor right now, uh, and he's not taking a lot. He doesn't command usage anyway, but he just it's a lot less than it used to be. So I don't want him. Uh, James Wiseman, I was hoping he w- we would get him closer to 4K again because then I, I would give him a look. But at almost five, knowing that he's coming off the bench, knowing that 25 minutes might be h- tough to get. No, everybody else, no. You mentioned Kelly Oubre with the revenge tour thing. I would like that if he was back to 5,600 or so. But at 64, this guy's just not taking enough shots. He's not doing. He's not hitting enough shots. He's just not doing enough to where I think value is going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to. That's one of the narratives that I just don't like right now. All right. <clears throat> we'll slide it over to the other side of the ball where I could see a lot more ownership being, especially for myself, because no Devin Booker. Uh, we already know this. There's going to be a fair amount of usage to go around. 
Um, you know, we Dario Sarch, he also, I believe, sat out today as well. I believe he's with the team. It's just kind of like a Jimmy Butler situation with conditioning at this point because he was in the COVID-19 protocol. So, um, I saw that he's going to miss another two games. Okay, so I, there you I go. believe. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, and that's that's something that we can note maybe with Butler too. It's just because just you're back with the team. These are both these guys. They haven't played in like two weeks. Uh, it's not like I, you know they missed two or three days. That's a long time to miss. And these guys are generally in some sort of quarantine where maybe they're not leaving their – Rubes too often. Nonetheless, I want some Chris Paul. I want some DeAndre Ayton. I want some Macal Bridges. And I want some Cam Johnson. I think all four of these guys are very much in play. Cam Johnson and Bridges getting a a little bit more priced up uh, than we're seeing Paul and Ayton. Paul and Ayton probably should be a little higher with no Booker. Uh, I expect myself to have a fair amount of ownership of all four of these gentlemen. So I'll pass it over to you, Santino. Um, it's that simple for me. It's a plus matchup for him. Sign me up for him. Yeah, and, and I'll have some exposure to all four of them as well. I think Bridges and Aiton are going to be the guys that I have the most exposure to. I just like their price tags. You get a slight discount there, and, and I'm already paying up at guard. I know that, so uh, there's there's that. But uh, there's not that many forward-type guys, small forward-type guys we talked about, so I, I do like Bridges at 6K. This is just a great matchup for them. Uh, and, again, there's no Booker, so – the usage is going to be funneled to them and probably Jay Crowder as well. Uh, but I do like the upside of Bridges and, and Cam more than Crowder at similar price tags. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to go those four with Aiden and Bridges getting the most exposure on my side. Yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I was getting ready to close this out, and I just kind of noticed an update that Cam uh, Payne did not play in tonight's game. Uh, it was definitely worth mentioning because, you know, with no Booker, if Payne sits again, I kind of want to see how this box score shakes out. Uh, but keep an eye on uh, Javon Carter and Etwan Moore. Both these guys would probably creep in there as some solid value territory if there's no campaign again. And I could definitely see myself getting shares of one or two of those guys if we get quite desperate. Um, they might even draw the start. You know, it's not even necessarily a, a, a need of desperate. It's just a four game slate. There's not too many bottom of the barrel. You heard about some of the other guys we talked about, uh, Avery Bradley. Taylor Nor and Tucker. I think both these guys would. You know, if one of these guys starts, they would surely be a better value play. Uh, at that price tag. So that's definitely worth monitoring. I, I just also, I want to see how this box score shakes out as well as we record this the night before. All right. That is it. Thank you guys for listening. We will be back tomorrow night with you guys. It'll be my good buddy, Brenton. It'll be my good buddy, Dave. They'll be crushing it, handling their biz as always. Santino, anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Uh, no, I just and this is a, a shorter slate where most of these teams uh, are everybody but three of these teams are so five teams are playing on a back to back. It's going to be a lot of news to monitor as normal, uh, but keep your eyes open, keep your ears peeled, and hopefully we have all of this news in before seven thirty when the when tip off starts. Yep, peel your ears, everybody. You heard Santino right from right from the source. Peel peel the ears. Uh, I, I think I don't know if that was the right side. Just breaking your stones, but uh, you're absolutely right, man. Short slates. It's it's. I think that's just going to be the theme for the rest of the season. Like if you don't have the time to fully immerse yourself into this news around lock, play light or don't play. It's the smartest thing to play. The best DFS players know when to limit themselves and know when to just take a slate off. So that's it. Thank you guys for listening. From everybody over here at the Hoopball DFS Today team, let's go out there. Let's take down some tournaments. Let's take down some cash games and win some money. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.